I am the co-founder of Silverstring Media, which is based here in Vancouver. Uh, we provide creative consulting to indies on narrative design, writing, level design, uh, helping make your work as rich and resonant as possible. Uh, we provide production assistance, helping guide you through funding applications, and we develop our own experimental projects and games as well. And games like Glitch Hikers, which is a game about driving alone late at night with yourself and your thoughts. Some long-time full indie attendees might remember us demoing early prototypes of this game at the meetup. Before we begin, a brief content warning. Some of these games do take place in the sex is real universe and timeline. <laughs> Therefore, there will be both visual and verbal acknowledgement of some sex acts. If you want to run screaming for the door, now is an excellent time. <laughs> Nothing overtly... Yeah, it's, it's pretty good, right? Yeah. Nothing overtly pornographic is going to be shown, though. Aww. All right. And now we have come quickly to the part of the presentation where I'm supposed to tell you a pithy one or two sentence definition for alt games. That's why we're here, talk about weird alt games. But I'm not going to do that. Doing so would reduce a huge and diverse group of artists with every goal and interest imaginable into one opinion. And that, I can safely say, is very un-alt games. I will instead be giving you a sampling, still nowhere complete, of their voices in addition to mine during this talk. Porpentine, one of the artists whose work I'll discuss in just a moment, urges us to destroy everything, to throw away all definitions, and reminds us that definitions are only ever controlled by the powerful and the privileged. Critic and game dev Lana Polanski points out that all experimental and radical artwork is part of an ongoing process and is subject to an evolving ethos. Just like Going Indie did in 2002, Alt Games is, at least partially, about allowing artists, a community of artists, to organize and survive, where before that was almost impossible. Lana says, I use the term Alt Games because it contains, uh, continues to be a useful way for myself and others to collect the work we do under a big umbrella. I use it because it makes it easy to point to a means of production, a process, a way to relate to my work and to my peers. To paint all these terms and movements as being interchangeable, however, would be to miss the point that each of them represents different issues, voices, and needs at different times. So, all games is the word for experimental avant-garde work right now. Even though it will change, and when it does, that's just a signal that some new people have something to say about our craft, and that we should listen. The hashtag and name Alt Games was coined by Soha Karim in 2014, with a lot of input from Natasha Dawn of A6 Productions. Soha created a Twitter bot, Support Alt Games, where outsider and marginalized devs could find each other and promote their work on Twitter. For the most part, all it does is retweet devs who tweet screenshots with the Alt Games hashtag, but that alone was enough. Soha says that moving forward, I feel optimistic about uh, the direction of alt games. Keeping its structures loose and foregoing a how-to guide is the point. It encourages more diversity and welcomes new perspectives on a growing medium. Natasha Dawn says, alt games is not some new kind or class of indie or whatever. In fact, breaking down the class barrier is an important aspect. It's not simply just make games. It's create a sustainable and safe system for marginalized people to create games. 
I don't think that the games themselves are 100% what con constitutes alt games, since it focuses on the artists and the community. Robert Yang, another developer we'll be talking about, says that he generally doesn't like labels with alt in them, since the alternative could be said to be anything, but that he likes the general values that alt games stands for. He describes those values as decommercializing your general attitude towards games, seeking alternative ways of paying your rent other than selling games on major platforms, experimenting outside of traditional approaches to game mechanics, loops, and strategy, championing of the short form and the political and the conceptual, and supporting new voices. These games are queer because of their foundational rejection of normative ideas about what games can be, alt games are in some way in conversation with queerness. Furthermore, many alt games creators, including myself, identify as queer, and thanks to the democratization of game-making tools like Twine, games are seeing an influx of diverse voices that has begun years ago and continues to grow every year. Alt games are a new part of the long legacy of queer artwork. All games is a man jerking off his gay car and getting stopped by the cops. <laughs> Robert Yang, the developer of this game, says that this short game tries this short game tries to expand eroticism in games beyond a cutscene. What if sex in games was something we did instead of something we obtained? One way to do sex is to see sex everywhere. Sex is here, sex there, sex behind yonder tree, and sex through the tender caresses that seduce gay cars everywhere. <laughs> There's a certain intimacy there, and that kind of intimacy is what every car commercial tries to evoke. Your first car is like your first kiss. He also likes the idea of making a driving game without steering, which is something that we did with Glitch Hikers as well. Um, Driving is a rich set of ha habits and activities, and Robert wanted to foreground less emphasized aspects instead of the usual tropes. For 52% of playthroughs, you get a happy ending, and you and your gay car can drive off into the sunset. But for 48% of playthroughs, the player will be stopped by heavily armed police officers. Why 48%? Robert explains, of the LGBT violent survivors who have interacted with police, 48% have reported that they have experienced police misconduct. Clearly, police abuse and brutality is still a very real issue for many LGBT people. All Games is a genderqueer singing detective, awkwardly searching for a missing Justin Bieber before it's too late. Diedrich Squinkifer, aka Squinky, is a writer, programmer, musician, and visual artist who creates games and playable experiences about gender identity, social awkwardness, and miscellaneous silliness. My favorite work of theirs, and the most formally unique, I'd say, is Coffee and Misunderstanding. Squinky describes it as a story that kind of looks like your typical boy meets girl story at first, except that the boy doesn't really feel like a boy, and the girl doesn't really feel like a girl. It's a commentary on the weirdness of online friendships that aren't really friendships. It's a play where all the actors are audience members, a collaborative game where finding the best ending or the worst ending or maybe just whatever ending is the most satisfying. There are four players, two of which control the conversation via smartphone and two of which who receive those dialogue choices on smartphones of their own and act out the scene. The scene is played through several times for one audience, uh, with different players each time, charting the possibility space of awkward and possibly life-changing convention matter. Here's the trailer. Uh, excuse me, uh, are you Artemis Fiddler of Bacteria Stories? Yeah, that's me. I'm Zeph. Zeph <laughs> I hope this isn't too awkward, but uh, I follow you on Twitter. I've had a crush on you for like forever. Can you ask as in, is it physically possible for you to ask or as in you're asking for my permission? No wonder you're such a lonely, closed off, bitter person. 
person. <laughs> <laughs> I keep repeating this conversation I'm having with you over and over again, <laughs> and I, I don't know how to stop it. Actually, I have an idea. <laughs> All Games is living your life split between prison-like drudgery and the desperate dream to escape to find something more. Porpentine Charity Heartscape is a writer and game designer whose games and curation contributed to the contemporary hypertext renaissance. In her twine game Howling Dogs, the player shifts between two settings. The first is an austere cell with nutrient dispensers, a toilet, a, san a sanity room, and an activity room where you can dive into vibrant fantasy worlds using a headset. As you play, your prison begins to break down, and unless you clean up after yourself, and really, you're in prison, why would you? The cell fills with trash. The other space is the dream worlds that you dive into each day. In these dreams, you can have tea on a battlefield filled with death knights. You were burned alive as a heretic because you are a woman who claims to understand God. You are a saintly child trapped in a tower, getting an education in the most appropriate ways to be assassinated. These dreams might seem just as bad as the prison, but Porpentine casts a stark difference between them by using the shape and nature of the text itself. In the cell, descriptions are sparse, matter of, effect, matter of fact. In your dreams, the world is verbose and detailed. Is there the possibility of further escape beyond even the scope of these fantasies? You'll have to play to find out, and I highly recommend that you do. It's uh, free online to play. All Games is hooking up with a Yale Town condo that's down to fuck. Tector is a game that uh, the Silver String team and I made for Global Game Jam this year. Uh, it focuses on a Tinder-like hookup app called Tector, where eligible and horny buildings look to get freaky with their human counterparts. <laughs> I wanted to see what kind of sexual encounters translate to uh, be between a building and a human, uh, and I was stunned at how well it worked across the board. Um, uh, the best results, though, were dealing with BDSM, because there was uh, already a pre-existing pre dom-sub relationship between humans and architecture that I could subvert. It was a, it was a really fun game jam. <laughs> These games are mystical architectures. A quick Google search describes a mystic as a person who seeks, by contemplation and self-surrender, to obtain unity or absorption with the deity or the absolute. A mystic is someone who believes in the spiritual apprehension of truths that are beyond the intellect. I would argue that many alt games seek to do the same. These games are spaces uh, focused primarily on the architecture and the place, and not what happens in the place, and the reflection that these places provoke and allow. All Games is contemplating what it would be like to become a monument, to have your bones and skin harden, immortal, immovable, constant under the sun and moon. Kitty Horishow, who made this game, Kirzra, Kirza, uh, Kirzra, uh, <laughs> I never get that one right, um, is the creatrix responsible for such abominations as Dust City, Greenhouse Eternity, and Anatomy. She is a game developer, bird girl, witch poet with worlds within her. Horishow is dedicated to the creation of beautiful, unnatural, impossible realms for you to explore and become lost within. Horshow's biggest release this, release this year is Anatomy. The premise of Anatomy is this. You find yourself locked in an unlit, unassuming suburban home. You stumble and grope your way forward through the almost pitch black until you encounter an old cassette player and a tape. Awaiting human ears. These audio logs provide a dispassionately anthropological accounting of the role of the house in human evolution, its psychological significance, and metaphorical musings on the house as body. The tight radius 
of dim light that surrounds us makes sight a tactile experience, which is a really great achievement for video games. Most of the objects are only so seen because they're within arm's reach, and Horror Show leans on the aesthetic glitchiness of alt games to further disfigure and morph objects in the darkness. They phase with repulsive quickness between recognizable shapes and monolithic placeholders. And in an excellent display of the horrific powers of digital architecture, as we continue to find tapes, the house morphs, growing veins, teeth, and skin. Alt Games is alone in the field, trying to decide how to spend the last 10 minutes before the rapture. Alt Games creator Connor Sherlock describes himself as a one-man band creating single-session, first-person video games. They focus on audio-visual bombast, expansive spaces, and the futility of total player agency in a world that will ignore them. <clears throat> Faced with the massive and growing hole in the sky, Will you spend your final moments unraveling the mystery, sitting and waiting, awaiting oblivion, or will you run as fast and as far as you can? I really love this game, and I highly recommend that you check it out. Another uh, alt games is running along dark rooftops and neon balconies, running toward a midnight goal, leaping into the future, flying toward a better tomorrow. Condor is much more mechanical than The Rapture is here, but it still maintains Sherlock's focus on atmosphere and contemplation. I once compared this game to the abstract color field paintings of Mark Rothko, writing that the views and vistas, the setups to strange three-dimensional geometries, is so much the point of this game. The journey is the act of punching through each one as you run along your allotted path. In this way, the game is not unlike a gallery designed by the artist. All games is symbol overload at the arcade on Meme Mountain. Natalie Lawhead describes her latest work, Armagod, which is actually pronounced Armagod, I think, uh, as a satire of our digital age. She says that computers have become a reality in their own right. We expect certain behavior from the software that we live in, websites we browse. We exist there, sometimes more than in the real world. If you close a window, it must close. If it does something else, outrage or confusion will follow. There's a small surge of panic when you hear an error sound or see that spinning beach ball or hourglass or whatever. <clears throat> so if you take all this behavior that we take as normal, and use it either as a joke or as a weird way of distorting someone else's sense of reality. It can really mess with people. The most interesting things are when they're broke.、Uh, sorry, things are most interesting when they are kind of broken. Alt Games is staring deep into the fire, searching for answers. In Oracle, you sit beside a fire and have a vision, and then you try to interpret it. Its dev, Sima Lazine, who is a Vancouver local, says. Video games as a concept should be more like music, so I've decided to pretend like they are. When I first resolved to make and sell small games, I wasn't really sure how to go about it. There wasn't really, and still isn't,、uh, though it's got much better, a clear path for how to get people playing small games. So I looked to music and adopted their framework. That's when he started to work on his ongoing collection of four games called the East Fan EP, of which Oracle is one. The EP references the shorter-than-standard albums of singles and other more obscure tracks that、uh, musicians can release. And the East Van part comes from the fact that these games are filled with symbols, places, and ideas that Simelazine associates with his home of East Vancouver. This is one of the many possible visions the game can generate. Simelazine says, "People often tell me that they feel like they don't know what to do when they arrive in one of my digital spaces." For me, that's kind of the point. The system and the reasons for engaging in the system obscure themselves, and in the end, there usually isn't a way to play better or faster. Nor is there a right, a right or wrong way to play. I don't want my relationship to, with to play to be about efficiency. Nor do I want to force that relationship on my players. All games is going to a sold-out demon summoning ritual at East Fans Rio Theater. Only to find that you've been press ganged into serving drinks. At least you still got in. 
Summon the Gap Garad is a first-person shooter, meaning in this case that you pour shots for ghosts and listen to their troubles while you wait for the show to begin. <laughs> These games are in conversation with themselves, with other games, and with art from around the world. All Games is the storied careers and beloved retrospectives of other artists from other fields, but in game form. Pippin Barr makes games that, are, that explore the artwork of others, looking at them from the lens of game-like interactivity. In The Artist is Present, you travel to the Museum of Modern Art in New York to see the retrospective of the performance artist Maria Abramovic. And probably, if you're like me, uh, you arrive when the museum is closed. <sighs> This is Marina, Marina Abramovic, and this is what she does. Long-form performance art exploring the creation of intimacy between strangers. Thanks to Pippin Barr, we can enjoy the magic of staring into a great artist's eyes from the comfort of your own home. Sweet. By making you play only during the actual hours of the MoMA, and making you wait in the incredibly long and slow line in order to stare into Marina's eyes, Barr is exploring the inaccessibility of art and the hostility of art through mechanics. But what I think is most brilliant about his work is how he holds in tension the fact that if the art was in any other, in, in any other form or it worked another way, it wouldn't work at all. Yeah, it's a pain in the ass to buy a ticket and go during certain hours and stand in line, but if it was just staring into my eyes right now, it, it wouldn't work. It's the mysticism, the pedestal that makes art work, and that pedestal has a hostility to it. And Pippin really captures that. See here? All Games is a troubled teen named Hoodie who desperately wants to be a Jedi, finding solace in a 500-year-old painting about heaven and hell. Like the artist is present, Cave Cave Deus Vide explores artwork outside of games. In this case, it focuses on the strange and mesmerizing paintings of Hieronymus Bosch. Cave Cave was made by We Are Musle, an independent game design duo based in Milan. I adore this game and uh, how We Are Musle was able to uh, make art based on existing artwork while also bringing into it their own distinctive style. style. Here, take a look. All games are tools for making other art. This is Become a Great Artist in 10 Seconds, which its creators describe thusly. Have you ever dreamed of being an artist? Although this was not possible before, now it is because we have made a computer program. Let your imagination soar in sketch mode or take a 10 second exam in which your imagination is subjected to the brutal and arbitrary standards of an unfeeling public under unreasonable time pressures. <laughs> All four of these works that I'm showing you right now were made within the game by another alt games artist, Liz Ryerson, which I believe makes this an artception. All right, with the last few minutes of my talk, I want to cover some frequently asked questions and common concerns, and then I'll take some of your questions. Where can I find more alt games? A good place to start is by looking at the Alt Games hashtag on Twitter, and also check out and follow the at support alt games Twitter bot. There is a meetup group in Vancouver, not unlike Fulendi, specifically for discussing alt games called Alt G, organized by the lovely Land Road. These meetups are a great place to find out about alt games, hang out with other fans and creators. I highly recommend coming to one. The next one that's coming up is this Wednesday, 7 p.m. at the Linux Pub. So sign up. I hope to see you there. Heart Projector is a local gallery show that puts together a space to play alt games several times a year. 
I had the incredible honor of being a guest curate, curator earlier this year during their Pride show. Their next show is on November 2nd and will feature Robert Yang as the guest curator. To find out more and to get an invite to the show, you need to first sign up for the mailing list at heartprojector.com. Also, if it wasn't for Heart Projector, I wouldn't have known about a lot of these games, including Cave Cave Deus Fide, which I saw just earlier this year at one of their shows. Most alt games devs do sell their games, or at least provide them for free using itch.io and GameJolt. So check out these platforms and search for alt games. On itch.io, I would specifically recommend Sima Lazine's curated list of alt games, which can be found on his itch homepage. There are many curated lists out there, uh, so do your own research, but that's the one that I personally use. Is my work alt enough? Is your work alt enough to be alt games? This is a hard question to ask, even though it's not particularly productive. I know because I ask it myself in my weaker moments. I definitely did in the run-up to this talk. Um, Soha Kareem, who created the Support Alt Games bot, says, I often see cr creators use the support alt game bot to ask if they're alt enough to contribute. And it's a difficult question to answer without creating expectations or a certain aesthetic or genre and making it the default. Instead, I have them consider mechanics, taking something that players of mainstream games are used to, such as the comfort of a tutorial or the strength of wielding a plethora of upgradable weapons. And then I tell them to destroy it, rewrite it, make it hurt the player, or push it out of their narrative entirely, and to make something that wields more power than the limits and expectations of the mainstream. I say, fuck this question. Don't worry about it. You keep doing you. If you want to push against normative game culture and aesthetics, that's great. But only do it because you want to, not because someone on the internet calls you a sellout. And about that, you really should also consider whether or not someone is actually calling you a sellout specifically, or if they're just discussing a systemic problems with the games industry. Save your energy and time for making your work and for more productive, positive discussions about your art and the art of others and how they all participate in a larger, ongoing conversation. How can I show support for alt games and creators? I'll begin with a quote from Zoe Quinn. If alternative games and small to mid-sized creators are to be sustainable, we must diversify the gaming audience and attract a, wider, attract a wider variety of players. I believe the likely audience for alt games is going to be people who would never have thought they'd be interested in games at all, wooded off by pre-existing preconceptions. And more people need to know about the work being done in the margins, because the people who have always dismissed games might find something that's there for them. While the problems with working in games are maybe more visible now than ever, the need for alternative spaces is more urgent. And that means that we have greater opportunities than ever before to create those spaces. A lot of these devs have Patreons, these in particular, including uh, Lana Polanski, who I uh, quoted earlier when I was talking about what are alt games. Uh, I would definitely uh, suggest that if you want to support alt game developers, pick your favorite and uh, subscribe. You can also just buy their games. They're on Itch, they're on Game Jolt, uh, and they're on their own websites. Newly minted award winners can pay it forward by spray painting their IGF booth with the name of their favorite alt game. In 2013, Richard Hoffmeyer won multiple IGF awards for his game Cart Life, which is awesome. Uh, including the Seamus McNally Grand Prize. He then surprised everyone by spray painting his booth with the name of Porpentine's Howling Dogs and displaying her game in place of his. This is a great way to support outsider artwork and also look like a badass. <laughs> I don't care if everyone starts doing this and it becomes passe. I still think our community would be better off for it and I would genuinely love to know what outsider or underappreciated artwork each IGF winner cherishes the most. Finally, if you happen to be a studio owner or a proprietor, or if you just happen to have lots of dosh lying around, then consider supporting alternative or outsider initiatives and platforms. Uh, Lucas 
Silver String's founder and myself are both fans of history and outsider perspective games criticism. So last year, we began a $5,000 per year sponsorship of the games history magazine Memory Insufficient, building it a new website. In 2017, that $5,000 will go to paying Memory Insufficient's writers and editor-in-chief for the first time in its four-year history. $5,000 isn't a lot on the grand scale, but it's what we can spare, and it makes a difference. I happen to know that Heart Projector, that local alt game gallery show I mentioned, is looking for sponsorship. So I'm just going to leave this slide up while I take questions. Thank you.